Hey everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 57. In this tutorial we are going to implement a dynamic point light. There are a few things we need to do before we implement the point light. First let's go to our pixel shader and let's revert where we were displaying the normal instead of the sample. And if we run this now we should just see I believe our nano suit object. Okay and we see our nano suit above us. And there are actually a few other changes that I would like to make. So first let's go to our game object. And we have our forward, left, right, and backward vectors. I would like to change this. So before we were just omitting the Y portion out of these vectors. And I would like to have versions that have the Y component and versions that don't. And the reason that I want this will be clear in a little bit, but first let's look at an easy streamlined way that we can add this in. So I'm going to add in uh, these versions with no Y component. And then let's go into where we are updating our matrices inside of the renderable game object. What we're going to do is we're going to take the code that we were using for updating the vectors and take that out here and inside of the game object we are going to add a new function for update direction vectors and let's just generate the definition for that inside of this what we will do is we will have the same thing that we had before <clears throat> except we are going to include the y component so we'll have to bring in the rotation around the x-axis for our normal vectors. And then for our vectors without the y component, we will just use 0 for the rotation about the x-axis. And then we will just update the vectors without the y component for that. And then we just need to update the matrix that's being used for this second group. And the last thing to be done is inside of the renderable game object CPP where we are calling update matrix. After we um, update the world matrix, we will just update the direction vectors. And keep in mind our camera class also inherits from this game object class. So we're going to take out where we were updating the direction vectors here and just call the update direction vectors function there. One last thing I want to change is inside of the game object header for the get forward, right, backward, and left vector functions, we're going to add a variable to be passed in for if we want to ignore the Y. So if we want to omit the Y component, and we are just going to default this to false. Then let's go to the definition for these functions. add in this boolean. And what we're going to do is if we are omitting the Y component, then we will return the version without Y. Else we will return the normal version. Now the reason that I did this is because there will be some times that I want to get the forward vector for an object, um, but I don't want the Y component. And an example of this is if I'm moving a character, but the character is not, uh, you know, like no clipping and flying through the air. Let's say the character is on the ground. Then when I get that forward vector, I don't want the Y component. However, let's say that I want to get a vector for where my character is looking at then in that case I would want to include the Y component and we will be using that in this tutorial. Alright so enough of that we need to go ahead and make a light class. So let's create a new header. We're just going to call this light and then we are also going to create a CPP in the graphics folder also call this light and then if we click on show all files, we need to move these up to the graphics folder.
probably have to do some reorganization of some of this at one point, but this will work for now. All right, so in our light header, let's take a look at the actual implementation of the light class. We are going to inherit from the renderable game object. And we are just going to have our own version of initialize, and this will not take in a file path. And then we are going to have the light color and the light strength. Now, one more thing you'll have to do is in the renderable game object header, you will have to change the model update matrix and world matrix from private to protected. Now back in our light header, let's look at the implementation of the initialize. Let's go to the CPP. And what we are going to do here is just, we're initializing from the same light model every time. And I'm going to include this in the repo. I need to go ahead and drag it. And it's pretty much the same thing we were doing with the renderable game object, just setting the position and rotation to the origin and just updating the matrix. So here I am going to take this new light model and put it inside of our objects folder. And it's just called light.fbx. So if we go back to our graphics header, what we can do now is we can include our light header. And then we can add in our light inside of where we are initializing the scene. We could go ahead and initialize this light after we initialize the game object. Let's copy and paste that since it's pretty much the same, but with no file path. Pass in the light. All right, and then up here where we are drawing, we're just going to add in drawing the light. We're going to pass in the uh, view matrix multiplied by the projection matrix, just like we did with our game object. And let's just see what this looks like. All right, so you see our little light bulb down at the origin, and then we have our nano suit uh, rotating, of course. So let's say that we want to move the light to the camera when we press C. Well, what we can do is we can go to the engine CPP and we can say if the key is pressed C, and what we can do is we can move the light by doing set position and if we just want to move it directly onto the camera we can do the camera get position float 3. And now when we test this, see when we press C, it moves it uh, directly onto the camera. Now you remember how we just changed it so we can get the forward vector with the Y component? Well, we're going to use that right here. So we want to calculate the new position for this light. So we're going to initialize it at the camera's position by getting the position vector. And then we are going to add the forward vector from our camera. And we just want it to go one unit, let's say. So we won't multiply it. If we wanted it to go two units, we could multiply the forward vector by two, but let's just say one unit. And then when we set position, we will pass in this light position and just for the heck of it, I want to also set the rotation of the light to match the camera's rotation. So I'm just going to call get rotation float 3. And when we run this, what should happen now is you see our light gets put in front of the camera. And since we are getting the Y component, we can also just change how we're looking and drag that. So now let's start to look into the actual lighting of things. Because so far we've just gone into actually drawing the light bulb, adding the light class, blah, blah, blah. But now we want to actually uh, have the point light do something. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the constant buffer types for our uh, constant buffer for the pixel shader. We're going to add in the dynamic light color which will have a red, green, and blue value, as well as the dynamic light string. Now let's go into our pixel shader. 
and follow this same layout. So we will add the color as well as the strength. One more thing we will need in this constant buffer, let's go back up, is the uh, dynamic lights position. Also, don't forget about 16 byte alignment. Uh, this works out because we have the 12 byte chunk and the 4, which makes 16, and then we have a 12 byte chunk and 4, so 16, and then we get a 12 byte chunk here. But just remember that the way that you line up your variables is very important for constant buffers, so be sure to pay attention to that. Let's go back to the pixel shader and add in this new uh, light position variable. Alright, so next what we'll have to do is if we go into the graphic CPP, let's scroll on up. Before we apply the changes to our pixel shader's constant buffer, we need to update these values. So for the dynamic light color, we can just call light dot color, light color. And then for the dynamic light strength, we can get the light strength. And then for the position, we can call get position float three. And there we go. Now the uh, constant buffer will be being updated with this data. So now let's modify this pixel shader to accept this dynamic light. So currently we are just using the ambient light and we are taking the sample color and multiplying it by the ambient light. What we are going to do is we're going to actually, just to clear it up, we'll make a new variable called applied light. And applied light will be initialized to ambient light. And when we multiply the final color we're going to take the sample color multiplied by the applied light. So first we need to get the intensity of the diffuse light. And we are going to do this by taking the dot product of the normalized vector from the uh, object, for, or from that pixel to the light, and then we're going to dot product that with the normal of this pixel just like we talked about in the last video. So that means that first we have to get the vector from this pixel to the light. We will just call this vector to light. Now to get the vector from this pixel to the light, we have to take the position of the light, and then we have to subtract the position of this pixel. Now, we actually do not currently have the position of this pixel inside of our shader. We have the position on the screen of this pixel, but we don't have the position in world space. So we need to add a new variable for the world position for this pixel. And we need to add this to the vertex shader for the output. and we need to calculate this. So for the world position, we need to pretty much do the same thing we were doing to calculate the screen position, but instead of using the world view projection matrix, we need to use the world matrix. This will give us our pixels point in the world. So now let's go back to the pixel shader since we have that. So if we take the dynamic light position and we subtract the pixel's world position, then that should give us the vector from that pixel to that light's position. Now we need it to be normalized. So we will normalize it like this. And now we are ready to dot product it to get the diffuse light's intensity. So we will do the dot product of the vector to light and of the normal. Now, there's one thing here we have to keep in mind. If the face is not facing towards the light, we will receive a value of zero or less. Because of this, we need to be sure that we don't use a negative value for the light's intensity, or else things will be darker just because they're not facing the light. To do this, we will call max, and we will pass in the result for the dot product, for one argument, and zero for the other. 
This will ensure that we will get a value from 0 to 1. If we get 0, then we won't have any diffuse light intensity, and that's fine. But we don't want to get a negative number and make that pixel darker than the ambient light just because this light is not hitting it. Next, we need to calculate the actual diffuse light. So we will take the diffuse light intensity, multiply it by the dynamic light strength, and then by the dynamic light's color. Now we will add this to the applied light. So at this point, the, the applied light will have the diffuse light added with the ambient light, and that's what we will multiply with the sample color. Now we have two options here. We can either saturate this color, or we could choose not to saturate it. However you do, it's up to you, but if we saturate it, then we will clamp the values at one. So we won't uh, light anything more than what it should be lit at when at max ambient. I'll just leave that for you to play around with and decide how you want to do it. But there are reasons for both approaches. So let's go ahead and test this. All right, so we see we have our light up here. And if we go to the other side, it's clearly darker. We can pull up our light controls and lower the amount of ambient light, just so we're just seeing this point light. And if we completely turn off the ambient light, we will only see the point lights bits. And if you notice, one issue is the point light shows up as black if there's no ambient light. Now the reason that this is happening is because the point light cannot light itself because its normals are not facing the light. So pretty much it's only getting lit by the ambient light. Now there are a few ways that we could address this, but we are just going to go with the simple route of creating another pixel shader specifically for objects where light should not really be applied. So let's create a new shader. We will call this pixel shader no light .hlso. We are going to copy the code in our pixel shader to this new shader. Now we don't have to do anything with the light in this one, so what we're going to do is we're just going to return the sample color and we are going to take out the constant buffer because we're not using the light at all and we're just going to keep the same layout that's fine now let's go to our graphics header and create this new pixel shader now we just need to initialize this so we'll go to the initialize shaders function initialize this new shader all right, and the last thing we need to do is, before we actually draw the light object, we just need to set the shader, or rather, we need to set the device context to use this new pixel shader. And now if we test this, oh, so like I missed something. Oh, I need to update the uh, properties for that new shader. So I'll right click, and we'll go down to properties and make sure it's all configurations, all platforms. Click on HLSL compiler. For the shader type, it's a pixel shader. And for the shader model, we are using 5.0. Press OK. And let's test this out. All right, now if we lower the ambient light strength, you see we can still see the light. So that's awesome. Now, there's one current uh, big problem with our light's implementation. Now if you notice, no matter how far we get from the object, the light still has the same brightness on that object. What we're missing is something called light attenuation. And in the next tutorial, we are going to implement light attenuation so that the further a light gets from an object, the less powerful it is. Yeah, though that's all that we are going to cover in this tutorial, and thanks for watching.